In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I color grade my FX3 footage in a simple location with no extra lighting apart from the natural light that's coming through the window. The way that I shot it, there was a lot of shadow on the other side, so it has that nice contrast between highlights and shadows. Now, the reason why I'm doing some typical footage rather than a well-lit footage is because a lot of the times, as creators, we do run and gun shoots. So I wanted to make it feel as natural as possible and a real scenario for all of you to follow and hopefully this helps you all when it comes to these situations. So first things first, just drag and drop your footage into the timeline. Go into the effects tab and type in Lum Lumetary Color. Drag and drop that into your footage. I chose a particular point in the location where a lot of natural light is coming through but it's also contrasted with the shadows because there was no light on the other side and it just created that perfect balance. And the best thing about FX3 is that it holds a lot of data when it comes to shadows and highlights. The first thing that I do, I go on to the creative tab and then I add my LUT into the footage just because it gives me a good base, a good guideline to work towards. And you can find loads of LUTs on the Sony website. They're actually free to download. So I would recommend you going onto the Sony website, finding one that suits you best or kind of style that you like. And it's always a good base to work towards. I'll link the ones that I have in my bio below, uh, just so you've got something there to download and you don't have to worry about searching for the right one for you. So I always choose the first one just because it works the best in most situations. So apply that. As you can tell, it's already too dark from the look. So I tend to half this or majority half it. So I'll bring it around to about, let's just say 60, because that looks good to me. And then what I do secondly is I bring my sharpness up to 25 to 30, because this is social media content. It's gonna be going on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. We all know social media decreases quality, so we wanna bring the sharpness up to more than usual. Usually it'd be around 12 to 15 if it's YouTube, but with social media, you wanna up it even more. Bring the vibrance up, and then bring the saturation up a little tad. Now the reason why I'm doing this before anything else is because, again, it gives us a good guide, and we can always change that later down the line when we start moving on to what is next, and that's the basic correction. Now this is where you're gonna bring your footage a little bit more alive with the highlights, shadows, contrast. I particularly like my footage a little bit contrasty, just so it feels like, I don't know, you're getting the best out of the footage, I guess, with the data that FX3 gives you. And you don't want to color grade something and then upload it and then realize, ah, oh, I could have actually added a little bit more contrast and make it feel a little bit more intense rather than having a, more of a flat image which is what I've done in the past. So I've learned to you know, experiment a little bit more with my contrast and, and not be shy of highlights and shadows. That being said, I'll always work on my highlights first. I don't typically use a histogram because I've worked with my footage a lot now and I kind of understand how I shoot. But if you're new to color grading, I would use a histogram and um, that allows you to focus on highlight shadows and colors and stuff like that, um, which I can do in another video. Just comment down below if you'd like to see that. I bring the highlights up to about 35, maybe 40. And then I do the same with the whites, bring it to about 30, maybe even 35. Sounds like a lot, but you'll understand why when I work on the blacks and the shadows and contrast. So next I will work on my shadows. I'll bring that down to about 25. Again, this is all experimental, but I'm working on the footage that I've got. Um, when you are shooting guys, just always make sure that you're shooting as as much as you can to the natural light. Use it to your advantage if you haven't got professional lights there. We did on this, but in this typical tip, in this particular location of the shoot, it was quite tight and there weren't, weren't much plug sockets. So we just thought we'd utilize the natural light that was coming through with also the shadowed side of the building, which actually created a really nice contrast between the two. Um, and that's kind of what we're working with today. So I'd bring the shadows down to really show off the contrast that we was trying to you know achieve within the shot and then I bring the blacks down just slightly because sometimes the blacks can be overpowering if you if you do it too much um, maybe even less than that to be fair minus six and then 
I always typically do the contrast last because as you can see, we've already created enough contrast between the highlights and the shadows. So this will just need a slight adjustment. It won't be anything too crazy. So I'll bring this up to anything between 25 to 35. Anything more than that just gets a bit too dark or too contrasty for me personally. Again, it's all personal preference. Okay, that looks good to me. I would then bring the exposure up a tad bit to maybe 0.2, just so it creates a little bit more exposure for the whole image, um, not just the shadows or the highlights. And that is already looking pretty good to me. Um, and then we'll move on to the curves. Now, this is where you can manipulate the footage quite a bit. If you're not a fan of yellow tinted colors in your image, a little bit like me, I don't really like horrible yellowy colors, especially if it's in this sort of setting. Um, if it's purposely done there with ambient lighting or anything like that, then it's a little bit different. But because this is just, we were just shooting in a natural environment in the building, I really don't like the yellow that's going above there. Um, and it looks horrible with the contrast of the, of the red as well. So we can manipulate that by just highlighting it in the toggle and then bringing the orange and the yellow down. Um, but when you're bringing the orange down, just be careful that you're not touching on his skin tone. So you might want to drag it down to more of the yellow um, side and you're still creating that knife, nice natural curve down. So if it is touching his skin tone slightly, it's only a gradual amount rather than if you were to do it from here as you can see it's it's messing with the skin tone quite a bit there especially in the highlight section um so you want to make sure that it's you're not really touching too much upon that um so i think that's that's a good amount for me personally um so what i'm going to show you now just the difference between before and after and that's just one little element to this now what I tend to do as well is I use hue versus hue when it comes to skin tones. So this is a really good tool to correct the skin tones if the skin tone is looking a little bit off. In this scenario, his skin tone actually looks pretty good um, based on what we've done so far. But if I wanted to either make his skin a little bit more magenta, I would bring it up. Or if I wanted to make his skin tone a little bit more orange red kind of greeny tint, I can bring it down if, if the correction is not, not right. However, you don't typically bring it down this way. You want the skin tone to look more magenta or as natural as possible, basically. Um, so I would just slightly push it up to the magenta side, but it, it don't really need too much touch, I would say. I think it's pretty good as it is. Um, now that footage to me is looking pretty nice as it is. There's a lot more that can be done, but just showing you toggled off, which is, of course, S-Log. I don't know if it's S-Log 2 or S-Log 3. Um, I think it might be S-Log 3. And then toggled on. Massive difference already. And what I then would do is, I'd bring the saturation up even more, just so we can get a little bit more color into the image. And then I'd bring the, the temperature down slightly, just to, again, really take away from that yellow that's above his head. Uh, it's not really gonna do anything major to his skin tones or all of that, because we're only touching it slightly. It's just some micro details that you really wanna focus on. And now I'm pretty happy with how it's looking so far, but I do want to create a gradient where the highlight is and just create a little bit more brightness to the natural lighting that's coming through. Now the best way to create a gradient in Premiere Pro is having an adjustment layer. So I'm just gonna move myself here. So I'm gonna go on adjustment layer, the same as a timeline, of course. Now this allows you to be more creative with your color of grading or you know, your image in general when it comes to coloring it. So you want to add the luminary color again, or lum lumetri color, however you say it, wherever you are in the world. And what I would do again is I would go into basic corrections and bring the highlights up again and the whites up again. Now, as you can see, it's creating, oh, not too much actually, that's a little bit overpowering now. So as you can see, it's created a, 
much more of a brighter image overall. That's just because we haven't done the gradient yet, which is the little hack. So I just want to toggle it off and on just so you can see what's happening here. Off and on, just that slight little enhancement. Now, I don't want it to affect the whole image. I just want it to be on basically 50% of the image. So in order to do that, just go from fit to 10%, so you can see the whole image. And what you want to do now is go on opacity. Still, in, This is on your adjustment layer still, remember that. Click on the opacity and just toggle around the box and make sure it's at the halfway point where the highlights are. If I go back to fit and toggle the off, you can already see the difference without smoothing in it out with the feather tool. So what you want to do with the feather is bring it up as much as possible so it feels as natural as possible. Because what you want to try to do is you don't want to make it feel artificial, you want it to make it seem as real as possible as if it's done within the image rather than in the edit. So if I toggle it off, on, off, on, it's just that slight adjustment that you can see that it's doing. Now I would even probably go on to the opacity and, and you know create the expansion even further to be fair so it's actually hitting the subject a little bit more. Um, so let's see how that's looking currently. No, so that's on, off, on, off. As you can see, that's a little cheat code of how you create the gradient in the Premiere Pro. And to me, we'll just play back the footage. I'm really happy with how that's turned out in terms of you know natural lighting, you're working with your subject and your environment, even though it might feel like it's against you, there is little pockets on where it actually does come to life and that's exactly what I did with this footage. So if you are in a scenario like that and you need to colour grade it, this is just like a little guidance in towards that. But I will keep doing more colour grading uh, tutorials or videos with different setups. So one for outside, one that's got professional lighting and it's lit correctly because the colour grading is a little bit different when it comes to that. I hope you enjoyed that video. It was a long winded one, but I hope you got some value out of this. And if there's anything else you'd like to see, let me know in the comment section. Uh, thank you again for watching this video. I'll see you all next time. Peace.